you're probably seeing lots of cards and things in the stores, everywhere from the grocery stores to the mall, billboards even, advertising for Valentine's dinner and making you feel like you need to hear exactly the right words to be loved, to feel loved, to make it valid that you have significance to another human being. Well, we know that greeting cards don't have the monopoly on the market. It's actually the word of God. God himself is love. God's love is in us, but so many times we can just mess up those words and others can do it to us and we don't feel loved and others are left not feeling loved. So let's explore that a bit more. How about phrases like this? That's it. I've had it. Uh, you do that one more time. I'm leaving. I hate you and I will never forgive you. I wish you were dead. It's over. I'm filing for divorce. You're a loser. You're pathetic. No one will ever love you. You never do anything right. Have you heard these words? And the syllables hover over you like a haunting frozen mist? Or have you ever felt in the midst of hearing them that you could never recover? Those words, you may have heard them long ago, can still feel wounds fresh as if you just heard them yesterday. Have you ever spoken those words to someone? Have you ever pierced the fragile innocence surrounding someone else with your frozen dart of words, those bad choices of things that came out of your mouth that you just can't take back? This misuse of words or rather even abusive words is even recognized by the world as being able to be forgiven, but not forgotten. The words that we hear and the words that we speak carry deep emotions with them and it's the feelings that we remember. Even though we say we can forgive them, forgive us, forgiveness, excuse me, forgiveness is not easily proffered. And then the wounds from these words can cause us to retreat, retreat down behind the icy bars, like a prison whose bars are forged with every inappropriate syllable spoken. Some words fly out randomly with no intentionality, no thought, but certainly with no intention to edify. Then words of comparison, words of preference, boasting, blatant mockery, one-upsmanship, careless indifference, empty promises spoken to gain favor, and then the even more empty apologies that follow, well, those are all attempting to appease but still leave a lasting sting. The cold chill produced by thoughts of those words, accompanied with the sense that inferiority is the end result of all the insults and the mockery and the broken promises, it can grip us and squeeze all of the life out of our relationships, whether we're on the giving or the receiving end of inappropriate words. We can grow cold if we fail to recognize that there is a better way. Years ago, I began to study all of the words and phrases that the scripture says about me as a new person in Jesus Christ and be able to commit them to memory. So um, here's some of them. I am redeemed of the Lord and I say so. 
I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. I am my beloved's and he is mine. And let's not forget um, Jeremiah 29. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. I can go on and on. Those are the ones that just came to the top of my head. There's a scripture reference for all of them. But I began to train myself to see myself in my new identity in Jesus. Here's the good news. These words that were spoken through the prophets, that were spoken through the apostles, that were spoken by Jesus himself, these words that I take to heart and have to remind myself of speaking them out loud even. My goodness, the world has mantras. We have scripture. We have the source of life. Through all of my doubts and misgivings about myself, that others put on me, when I compare myself to somebody else and I fail at my own vision of myself, whatever it is, these words of scripture are what are keeping me grounded. It's not about my exalting myself above others or above anything. It's about the reality that the Lord himself has already placed Satan, the defeated foe, underneath my feet for his plans, for his purposes, for his glory. And against such, there is no one, there is no thing that can triumph. So whether it's late at night and you hear the icy whispers of the enemy, even Martin Luther dealt with that and wrote voraciously about it, or it's the clanging of a gong, someone at work who just always has to be insulting you or making you feel like you're underneath, or that person in that relationship who has never caught on to the fact that you have as much value as that person does. Whatever it is, we have to understand that God went to such great lengths to give us a new heart of flesh and to give us a new identity. And so when we compare ourselves with others, when we continue to talk about us, our own selves, in terms of being not worthy and being unfit for service, uh, just a poor old broken machine, well, that's what we are without Jesus. But in Christ Jesus, we're something more. We are the redeemed of the Lord and we need to say so. Or we have nothing different to say than the rest of the world. How can that be? Okay, well, James chapter 3 talks about that and we are going to get more into that next week. But now, the cure for the cold word for this week is to say and continue to say what the scripture says about you and continue to say that the good things what the scripture says about your accusers to pray for your accusers to have mercy on your accusers we talked about that last week and continue to pray for them because of the mercy the lord has had on you um James chapter 3 verse 18 says, For peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Isn't that the end goal? The righteousness of God for his glory to be shown? How's it going, ladies? Are you still cold? Are you still fighting the cold? You are not alone 